dear. I can't. I can't go back and face them. I can't say I've lost my job and I, I can't, oh, I can't stay at Kiplington. Oh God, oh Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, canst thou not also take away my burden? Not sin, not sin, O oh Lord, but time and life and weariness. I now declare the meeting open. We ought to read out the rules of the society. Why? It's the proper thing to do. Before every meeting, actually. It's the minutes you mean, not the rules. Well, we haven't got any minutes. I founded the society and I say it's the rules. All right. Quiet everybody while Mate reads the rules. <coughs> This society shall be called the Anti-Sikh Society, or the ASS. Its object is the abolition of the Sigglesweight monster from Kipkington School. Members are elected by a committee consisting of Mitch Carr, Gwyneth Rogers, Jennifer Gray, and Judy Peacock. The society meets weekly and gives marks to its members judged by their behavior towards the Sikh. Marks should be awarded as follows. Ordinary cheek in class, one point. Personal insults, two points. And picking up dropped hairpins, two points. Drawings, if good, two points. If good and in a public place, <laughs> three points. And a rarely splendid piece of cheek affecting everyone, ten points. <laughs> also, whoever does it shall be called Queen ASS for the term and preside at all meetings. Otherwise, um, top marks for the week make a president. This society was the idea of MC. What's the score now? Oh, um, Gwyneth six, Jennifer four, Judy and Midge three each, Leslie and Molly naught. Here, hang it up then. Can't anybody <coughs> think of something worth ten points? Something really splendid. Use the term of it. I can. I've thought of a marvellous idea. All right, so you just get to the Okay. All right. Now, listen. You know our nature friend. Write a study of some living creature whose habits you observe for yourself. Yes. Now I've thought of a really splendid idea. You know how she loves the stickleback. The little stickleback? Well, why not the sickle's back? <laughs> Who dare to write an essay on the sickle's back? I mean, why not? We've studied it, haven't we? We've observed it for ourselves. Oh, oh I see. Wait, wait, wait. Um, the, the sickle's back. A bony little creature, cold blooded, lives in the mud, builds nests. In its hair. It prefers <laughs> dirty water. It never makes. It's <laughs> marvelous. Midge, you're priceless. Time to dismiss, girls. Place your nature study exercise books neatly on my desk as you leave.
the life and habits of the Sigil's back. The Sigil's back never meets. It's too bony. Also, it has a most peculiar smell. It builds nests in its hair for breeding purposes. It has no voice but a kind of piping squeak when it is angry. Exactly what is the procedure with staff letters? I mean, you collect... Oh, so th I suppose Miss Jameson's been here. Well, she is second mistress, and no doubt she has a right to report misconduct among her subordinates. But even I have my dignity, Miss Burton. I may not have a university degree and all that, but I have my dignity. I am not an office boy to carry messages. Of course not. I was only going to suggest that if a letter should be accidentally delayed... Accidentally? Uh, so she did admit it was an accident, did she? She seemed to me to think that I did it on purpose. Really, she's insufferable. She was bad enough before she became engaged. Ever since. Do sit down, Miss Parsons. Now I suppose I'm talking exactly as she thinks I talk. She's always staring at unmarried women. She seems to think that either we envy her, her wretched little fiancé, or that we're all frozen and inhuman, riddled with complexes. It's not kind, and it's not nice, and it's not good for the girls. I agree with you. I agree with you entirely. Oh, there's far too much talk about virginity in its opposite altogether. It's very silly. But... I do feel rather sorry for Miss Jameson. I think we shall have to make allowances for her. After all, she's not a young girl, is she? And this engagement seems to have gone to her head a bit. I understand she's waited several years for this young man's promotion, and there's still no sign of it. Well, that must be very trying for her. Tiresome for us, too, perhaps. But what I feel is that there's probably a very real fear of loneliness and old age behind her pose of superiority. You see, she's not naturally a very lovable person, is she? And if she doesn't marry, I think one day she may feel terribly isolated. Oh. Oh, I hadn't thought of that. You see, I expect it's really quite difficult for affectionate and motherly natures like yours, Miss Parsons, who find it perfectly natural to love and be loved, to understand how desperately and fiercely possessive a lonely egotist can feel about any symbol of attractiveness that she may acquire. Miss Jameson's engagement ring is a tremendous thing to her. It's a sign that somebody really loves her and wants to live with her and that she returns that love. I dare say he's the only person she's ever loved. So it's not so strange that she should cling to him and all that he stands for with such pathetic vehemence. It's a very real and terrible thing, an unloved old age. 